Welcome to the family here on Purple Mafia. I am your host, Peladino Joey or Joey Awajan. Purple Mafia is available on all of your favorite podcasting apps. I thank each and every one of you once and always for downloading and listening to this show. I guess it's a pleasure to be back on board with you once again today. I guess. <laughs> As, uh, yeah, well, I'm starting to hate football. I'm really starting to hate football for so many reasons. It's just, you know, first of all, it feels like the Minnesota Vikings are light years away from, uh, you know, like, are, are we ever going to win a championship? And even if we get to the Super Bowl, would it, would it end the way this game did, where the Vikings are playing so well the whole game? They screw up. They fumble at the B. They fumble. They, uh, they fumble after they get into the red zone. They fumble a punt. <laughs> yeah, still have a chance to win so many times over. Can't get the first down that they need at the end. They, uh, <laughs> and then they can't get the huge stop at the end that would have iced the game. That sounds about right. And, you know, even if we got that far, and odds are it would be an ending like that in the first or second round at the end of the day, or in the NFC Championship game, which has been for the last, you know, X amount of years. What was it? What has it been? Like eight NFC Championship games in a row or some crazy number, like off the charts. It's a, it's a big number, <laughs> one way or another. I've seen the Vikings lose four NFC Championship games since I started watching football. So it's been at least six, I believe, yeah, in a row since, uh, not eight, that's probably exaggerating, about six in a row since... Um, the uh, Vikings got to the uh, Super Bowl only to get crushed by the Raiders, fumbling at the goal line, of course, to open the game off after a great opening drive. At the end of the day, the Kansas City frickin' Yuck City schmucks, Yuck City chefs, swear word everywhere, defeat the 49ers 25-22. to Are you kidding me? It's not it's not it's not it's better. I mean, Are you serious? You gotta say- Just drop dead, shut up, and get out of my face. Shut up! This is a blizzard of balls! I can't believe humanity was capable of degrading itself so low as to produce such an insulting catastrophe of ass! You know why I'm sick of football and why I don't like it and why I step away for months on end during the offseason? Because of predictable bullcrap endings like this. That's why. It's just so predictable. The team that, that the NFL worships, the team that the media worships, I'm sick of it already. I, I have been sick of this team for years now uh i'm glad to see some of you out there are finally starting to like realize like yeah i'm really tired of the chiefs yes yeah um it's just it's it's kind of like the dallas cowboys all over again it's like oh here we go again like it just you don't want to see them and what's probably well one of the many upsetting things about all of this the chiefs were having a down year it's like good they're gonna get knocked out in the first second round maybe you know, but no, oh, he gets to the AFC title game again. Oh, oh, now we got to start calling him the GOAT now because he's been to X NFC, uh, AFC title games. He who doesn't need to be named at this second. Um, you know, we get all this stupid GOAT conversation, which I think is utter nonsense. And then, you know, <laughs> and then they, they somehow get past a, uh, like a Baltimore team that just freaking folded offensively in the, uh, you know, when they, when they had golden opportunity after golden opportunity after golden opportunity, a Buffalo team that gambled and lost over and over and over, had so many opportunities to win. And then the 49ers looked so good to start off the game, driving down the field. Of course, there's a freaking fumble in Vikings, you know, in just in complete Vikings fashion, you know, like a, a fumble, they get all the way to the red zone, things look positive. The, the 49ers defense is off the charts, fantastic throughout the game. Mahomes looks mediocre at best, throws a key interception, uh, and then what happens? What happens? The 49ers have a three and out. Brock Purdy looks like completely in over his head because the offensive line suddenly isn't playing well. Um, and the uh, Suddenly the 49ers uh, defensive line, you know, starts to not be as good as it was earlier. And then, of course, the injuries start to pile up. Obviously, again, a, a super important linebacker, uh, green light out, you know, and that's terrible news. Hopefully he's okay. I believe it was an ankle-related injury. Offensive guard as well, hurting his hand. For the 49ers, uh, Debu Samuel, you know, fighting like a warrior, though I'm getting sick and tired of his injuries. My God, I mean, is he ever healthy? When is Debu Samuel actually healthy? Like, I'm getting sick of that. Um, one minute Purdy looks like, you know, like looks, looks like a young Montana, young uh, Brady. The next minute he looks like a guy who, you know, he looks like, a, you know, uh, I don't know, Simeon or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what you know? Insert your backup, your run-of-the-mill backup quarterback was in over his head in a big game, uh, you know that, that type of thing. So that was insanely frustrating, and 
Maybe the most frustrating thing of all, why does Steve Spagnuolo have to be with the Kansas City Chiefs? Why couldn't it be anybody else? Why, could it, why couldn't it be Baltimore? Why couldn't it be the 49ers? Why couldn't it be the Vikings? Why couldn't it be the... Wouldn't it be nice if Steve Spagnuolo was our <laughs> defensive coordinator? As good as Kevin Flores is, uh, Spagnuolo is obviously the best in the business, period. Why couldn't he be with the Washington, uh, whatever they are, commanders now? You know, why couldn't he be anywhere but the bleeping Chiefs? Why the Chiefs? And, uh, you know, no matter, every time you think the 49ers have a chance to wrap this thing up, they somehow don't. Is it a three and out? Is it some kind of stupid-ass penalty that pushes them back three yards? <sighs> yeah. Uh, did I say three yards? It pushes them back 10 yards. Some stupid holding penalty. Like, what were you thinking? Come on. There's no reason for the hold. Like, just use your brain. Somebody's magically out. Was it uh, Kittle? Couldn't couldn't do anything in the whole bleeping game. And, of course, he's hurt off and on throughout the whole bleeping game. Couldn't do a damn thing. If, if, if he made one play that was worth anything, the, the 49ers probably would have won the game. It just drives me nuts. And Buckner, Buckner, whatever the heck his name is, could make a field goal from St. Paul, probably. You know, St. Paul to Las Vegas. That was ridiculous as well. Like, my God, does he ever miss? Does he ever miss? I was just waiting and waiting for that Gary Anderson moment to come, and it never came. It would have been hilarious. Like, imagine he misses that kick. <laughs> imagine he misses the kick, like, to, to tie the game up. That would have been hilarious. Oh, I would have been, yes! You know, I was just waiting for that moment. And, of course, it just didn't come because the Chiefs are, I don't know, I, <laughs> The, the Chiefs are just, they're just entitled to the Super Bowl, I guess, no matter what. Even when in a down year, when they're not good, the whole bleeping season, they're acting like jackasses, blowing up on the sidelines at refs, blowing up at each other, blowing up at their head coach. Complete jackasses. And, you know, you think they're going to unravel, they're going to fall apart. Like, hell yes, this is great. It'd be nice to see this stupid team lose this game. And then players, like, start, you know, players start to leave and then it's all over. That would be the most awesome thing ever. But no, somehow they magically come back and win the game. It's just whatever. <laughs> this was, how can you root for the Kansas City Chiefs? How can you stand them? I don't understand it. I, I just don't. Now you want to respect Mahomes' ability and how he can throw a ball from this angle, from that angle. He finds a way to get loose. It's a, uh, uh, rooting, when you're rooting against the guy, it's mind-bogglingly frustrating beyond belief. So I completely understand his abilities and his talents. That's, uh, but quite honestly, these should be the police chasing down the Chiefs for robbing this game. And the 49ers also for just, how do you not win this game? I mean, this reeked of the Saints and Vikings, like fumbling it away, uh, magically not protecting the quarterback when it matters most. Of course they didn't, right? Of, of course. And then Steve Spagnuolo being the best defensive coordinator we've ever seen, like ever. He is the best defensive coordinator in NFL history, and there's nothing you can do about it. Everybody's saying how Mahomes is the MVP, uh, this and that, and you know this. You know, Mahomes is the goat, and uh, um, whoever. Like maybe you'd say Purdy was in over his head. I, I think he did okay, but in over his head in certain plays. But generally speaking, I think Brock Purdy is a quarterback that could win a Super Bowl, especially when you have weapons like that. <sighs> Shanahan, very disappointing. Um, and I like Shanahan. I have nothing against the guy at all. I I would love to see. Um, I almost called him Mike. I would love to see Kyle Shanahan hold that Lombardi trophy. As long as it's not against, uh, you know, us in the NFC title game or whatever. You know, I'm going to root for the San Francisco 49ers pretty much every game except against the Vikings. Pretty much. Obviously, the Patriots are irrelevant. You know, they're my favorite a AFC team, you can say. They're irrelevant now, unfortunately, but we'll see how they re rebound with a different coach. 49ers are my second favorite NFC team. The Vikings are my favorite team, 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 team. And obviously, this is a podcast. I'm trying to be objective. I'm trying to be more of an objective host of a football show rather than a just a, a fan who's screaming and yelling and the ref screwed us and I'm going to wear purple paint I, I, every week. That's not who I am. But at the end of the day, um, yeah, I, you know, there's no, the only time I'm really rooting against the 49ers is, is when they're playing the Vikings. So obviously, there was a double emotion in this game. Really wanted the 49ers to end their drought and really want to see the Kansas City Chiefs go away. I want the sideshow to end. I want Kelsey and uh, what's-her-name to break up. I, I don't want to see them anymore. I want Kelsey to retire. I want the 49ers, or what are they called, the Chiefs to... This, <laughs> I would love to see the Chiefs, like, you know, start to start to kind of... You, you know how teams are. They start to kind of move on, this and that. They start to kind of move on. Maybe they're still competitive, but their championship days are over. 
you know, I, I would hope and pray that day is not that far away, but I don't know what to say. That <laughs> It might be forever the way it's looking so far. Now I'll attempt to look at the game semi more objectively, and I apologize if I'm coming off like a screaming idiot here, a bitter old man who's, I don't know, I just, I'm not a fan of the Chiefs, sorry. And I'm not the only person. Uh, believe me, they're everywhere. You know, and you have every right to be everywhere. I, I mean, I don't know. I think the 49ers are 10 times more likable. And I don't know, it's just, it's a classy franchise. It's a classy franchise, always has been. So that's how I look at the 49ers. I, I, the Chiefs, I, I, I used to like them, but they've become a bleeping sideshow. So it's impossible to cheer for them. I can't stand them. You know, they were a sideshow last year when that stupid clown was, you know, making a fool of himself about the burrow head my ass and all that running, rubbing it in the, you know, the Bengals face, like grow up dude. And then how he got even worse after the silver bowl. And then you bring in Taylor Swift of all people. One of the ugh, yuck. I'm sorry. You know, that's all I need to say. It's not hatred. It's just fatigue. I'm sick of it. Go away. I'm sick of it. It's not hatred. It's fatigue. Go away. I got fatigued of the Cowboys. Fatigued of them. Just go away. Did I recognize their talent? Yes. Do I recognize, of course, Brady's talent? And do I understand Brady fatigue? Of course. But Brady, to me, was a lot more likable. I'm sorry. I think the Patriots were more likable. Maybe Belichick, yes and no, kind of. <laughs> but it is what it is. Let's look at the game more objectively. And I, I'm sorry. I know I'm just going on and on. And you're probably rolling your eyes. Well, good for you. Uh, both teams were having a hell of a time getting in the end zone in the first half. That's for darn sure. Uh, it took a trick play by uh, Jennings late in the uh, first half. You thought that maybe there you go. There's that opportunity. You know, it's kind of like the Philadelphia Eagles making that kind of trick play on the Patriots before the end of the half that started really putting the momentum in the favor of the Philadelphia Eagles. You're hoping, if you're if you're rooting for the 49ers, that that would uh, be the case. But unfortunately, it just definitely wasn't. Anyhow, so plays like that, obviously, you know, the fumbling... The fumbling, the kickoff, it's just, I don't know, I, I kind of, not, yeah, fumbling the kickoff, fumbling in the red zone by Christian McCaffrey, of all people. And then later on in the game when the 49ers had a chance to take a touchdown lead in overtime, since unfortunately the rules have changed where the Patriots simply marched down the field and scored a touchdown to win the Super Bowl. It's like the rules have changed multiple times now. See, like back in the day, you could win a Super Bowl on your on the, by winning the toss and kicking a field goal. And then, or, you know, winning a Super Bowl a playoff game or whatever, regular season game by doing that. And then it became, okay, if you make a field goal, the other team still has a chance to score a touchdown and win or kick a field goal and tie the game up and then, you know, keep going from there. Then it's sudden death until the clock runs out and then it's a tie. If it's a playoff, it's sudden death until someone scores um, after, after like, one, at least one attempt by each team one way or another. Whereas in this case, now now it's like you score a touchdown and the other team still has a chance to tie it with a touchdown. Anything less than that, and, you know, the 49ers are your world champions. So it's interesting how that uh, has changed, obviously, over the years. It's kind of weird, but it is what it is, and it sounds like a lot of 49ers players didn't realize that. So I, I, that's kind of stupid and disappointing. Um, whatever, it, whatever it was, just score the damn touchdown Play some damn defense and keep those sons of biscuits out of the end zone. That would have been great. But you played like dog dookie when it mattered most. And that's the unfortunate part of it. Brock Purdy at the end of the day, 255 yards. He had a great, 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 great first quarter. Second and third quarter, it was like, what the bleep, until like the very end of the third quarter. What did he have, like three yards or something? The whole damn 49ers offense had three yards in the third quarter. It was like, at least for uh, you know an extended period, until finally they got something going. Uh, ultimately, they didn't score. The Chiefs ended up tying the game up. And then the fourth quarter was a completely different ball game. The 49ers drove, drove down the field, obviously, and scored. But then the what's-his-name missed the kick. You know, he missed an extra point. He got blocked, which has uh, fueled a bit of the conspiracy theorist crowd thinking that the game's rigged and such. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I'm not going to say no, but at the same time, it's like probably not. I mean, it, it reeks of being rigged, though considering who won. That's what's annoying. Um, years ago, people would have said that about the 49ers, you know, the Montana and Young era, because clearly they were the, uh, you know, they were the golden franchise of football. But, I don't know, if you hated the 49ers, it'd be because you're a division rival or you're a Cowboys fan. You know, the Chiefs, it's just different. It's a different vibe. Like, you know, like, why would I hate the Chiefs? They're in the other conference. Who cares? Because they're jerks. <laughs> I don't know. They're, they're jerks about it. <laughs> At least certain players are. Um, it's because they're, yeah, they are. Uh, 
Moody and Buckner, when it came to kicks, were fan, were phenomenal. That stupid extra point ended up uh, really costing the 49ers, where maybe the Chiefs would have to score a touchdown to end the game in regulation, and maybe just maybe the 49ers would have made that stop. Maybe they wouldn't have, but we'll just never know, I guess. I guess we'll never know. Uh, it was beyond frustrating to see how things went. Uh, lots of punts in the game, of course. Both punters were phenomenal, both averaging almost 51 yards a punt, which is crazy. Both t- uh, two times in the 20 and no touchback, so insanely impressive by both punters and kickers. So generally speaking, the special teams were really good, but uh, well, but special teams are really good except that frickin' fumble, which was insanely, uh, you know, it was insanely devastating for the uh, San Francisco 49ers. So, yeah. Uh, it just it's gonna haunt them forever. Oh boy, yep. So it's just one of those games. It's gonna it's gonna it's gonna bug you forever, basically, if you were rooting against the Chiefs or whatever. Um, it's just yeah, the Jair Brown interception that was a terrible throw by uh, believe it or not, a terrible throw by Patrick Mahomes. He can actually throw bad. He can actually make bad throws. But the fact that the 49ers were three and out, it was just a worthless, worthless attempt at doing anything. You were in Chiefs territory, and you couldn't even move. You couldn't even move. It was like playing Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde on the NES and running into the, the, the Mad Bomber over and over and over and not knowing what to do. That's pretty much what the 49ers did. Ugh, I mean, yep, it was Daryl Luther Jr. He also had a fumble recovery by Hargrave, and that was always uh, a, a good thing where the 49ers yep, just could not capitalize in moments, and it was just, it's a damn shame. So, two turnovers. Brock Purdy, good job not throwing interceptions, of course, so that was good. It's just, I don't know, I think they were too conservative at times. Sometimes they ran the ball way too much when clearly the Chiefs were ready for it, and then when there are opportunities to run the ball when clearly the Chiefs' defense is getting tired, no matter who the damn defensive coordinator is, then they started getting kind of weird and throwing, uh, trying to force plays to receivers that were covered really well. Clearly, the Chiefs' secondary is as good as it gets. I mean, I'm going to keep saying this and call me a hater of Mahomes and Kelsey. I don't like Kelsey at all. You know that already. Mahomes, I think he's I think he's full of himself a bit. <laughs> I think it's obvious. I think, you know, and I know, does he have a right to be? I, I guess, whatever. I th- I'd like if you'd, I would like if you'd carry yourself a little more gracefully at times like Joe Montana could or some other guys in the past, you know, like a Doug Williams and such. Um Carry yourself more gracefully a little bit. It'd be it'd be nice, but unfortunately, people just can't. More gra- yeah. <laughs> so I know I'm probably having terrible grammar here, but um, Kelsey's inc- incapable of doing that. By the way, that's why he's with somebody like that, who's imp- who's also incapable of being graceful <laughs> about anything. Uh, I don't even remember what I'm even leading towards. I've got so much going on in the background. Um, golden opportunities lost. That's just the bottom line. Golden opportunities lost. Okay, so what I was really getting to, my brain is like wandering, is um, you can say oh, Mahomes is the MVP and he's the reason, he's this or that. Steve Spagnuolo and the Chiefs defense is the reason why the Kansas City Chiefs are the Super Bowl champion again. They're back-to-back champions. The Chiefs defense is the reason why they won the Super Bowl. It is. Imagine if this 49ers team took care of the ball a little bit better. Imagine if they could get first downs more often in the game, they probably would have won the game. It, it might have actually been a uh, it might have actually been a comfortable win for the 49ers. The Chiefs would have had I don't know 19, let's just say, and the 49ers probably would have had 31 if the Chiefs' defense was anything like it used to be, kind of a bend but don't break <clears throat> in the past, like say 2018-ish and such. Before Spagnolo got there, the uh, Chiefs would have been a yeah, the Chiefs would have lost this game if not for Spagnolo and some of those players like Chris Jones. Sneed is a jackass. Yeah, he, ugh, he's an absolute jackass. Um, so I hated seeing him make the big stops that he did down the stretch, but, uh, you know, I guess credit where it's due. And uh, Pennell with some huge, huge run stops. Obviously super, super fantastic game for him. The big son of a gun. Um, and what else can you say about it? The Chiefs' defense is the main reason they won the game. Again, that's not being hateful or anything. It's a fact. Did you watch the game? Did you? So that's my MVP. It's, it's Steve Spagnuolo is my MVP. I mean, you could say it's Pennell, obviously stopping the run and such. But again, and I think the, uh, I think the uh, Christian Potter Memorial, yeah. So so the Fran Tarkington Award, the Tom Brady Award, whatever, is going to go to yeah the Tom Brady Award. 
So like Super Bowl, you know, the MVP of the Super Bowl goes to Steve Spagnolo. It doesn't go to Patrick Mahomes. It goes to Steve Spagnolo. The <laughs> so this is going to be non-players here, folks. The Christian Potter Memorial is going to go to a guy I like a lot. I like him a lot, but he blew it. Shanahan. It's going to go to Kyle Shanahan. The Christian Potter Memorial is going to go to Kyle Shanahan, um, and it's too bad. I, I like him, but well, he's got the biggest comeback uh, going against him in Super Bowl history. The Tom Brady. <laughs> it's going to go against him. So, Christian Potter Memorial. No, Dennis Northcutt Memorial. And I still feel bad for Dennis Northcutt even saying it. But, yeah, so when it's a Super Bowl, we're going to have a different... Um, these will probably be our future, if, if, if I'm going to do this for fun in the future. For the Super Bowl, for sure, but also for possibly playoff games. It'll be the Tom Brady Award and the Dennis Northcutt Memorial. So, the Dennis Northcutt Memorial is going to go to um, Mr... It's going to go to Mr. Uh, Shanahan because of, I don't know, some very questionable play calling, uh, ultra-conservative in some cases, trying to force plays in other cases, trying to force plays that just simply weren't there. And it's freaking frustrating. And also the fact that you know all the Chiefs players knew the, the overtime rules, the current overtime rules. I mean, you have to be updated and stuff like that. You have to know. You have to. As a fan, what whatever. As a player... In the game, you better know. And the coach, you absolutely better know. So, the um, yep, the Dennis Northcutt Award will go to, or Dennis Northcutt Memorial is going to go to Kyle Shanahan. And I hate saying that. I wish I was giving Kyle Shanahan the Brady. I wish he went out there and coached his butt off and 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 dissected this Chiefs defense. But guess what? <laughs> it just didn't happen. Um, Isaiah Pacheco, Pacheco, I hate him. Ugh, I, that guy is one arrogant little SOB. I, he drives me nuts. Obviously, you know, he's, he's good, but he's not as good as he thinks he is. Obviously, he's more along for the ride than he thinks he is. Obviously, he's talented, but, you know, I'd, I'd take him on the Vikings right now. He's better than any running back we had. Um, you know, he is. Obviously, uh, Cam Akers was nice. I hope he's hope he's recovering okay. I felt, you know, it's, you know you, you feel terrible for the guy with the, uh, the uh, Achilles tear, so... Hopefully uh, he's recovering nicely, and I wouldn't mind if the Vikings brought him back, frankly, but we'll see how things go there. Vikings obviously need a running back. The running game is definitely different than it used to be. See, it's like when we had Mike Zimmer, it's like all we're doing is running. This is dumb and weird. You know, we're trying to force the run nonstop. And then we go with uh, O'Connell, and he wants to go 1,000% the other way. And then you see Mahomes and his 333 yards and such, you know, 46 pass attempts, and then you think, oh, yeah, see, there it is. So that's the way to go. Pass, 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 pass. I think it's all about balance. I think it's all about balance. The 49ers balanced, but the timing of the decisions were not so good. And McCaffrey, I expected better. I really did. I really expected better from McCaffrey. You know, I thought he was going to have a huge game. Uh, the one defense, or the one, the one defense, the one weakness the Kansas City Chiefs defense has is against the run, and McCaffrey just, you know, he he just didn't really exploit it as much as you thought he could, and then you had that, and then of course you had that fumble, which was devastating, devastating beyond belief. Uh, Juwan uh, Jennings might have been the MVP of the Super Bowl if the 49ers won, because he had a passing touchdown on a nice kind of a, kind of a flea flicker, or whatever you'd call it type of play, that was cool, uh, it wasn't thrown to the quarterback like where it was in the, in the Eagles uh, and Patriots game, but it was a th- passing touchdown. And that was fun to watch to, Mc, um, to McCaffrey. And then the um, obviously the receiving touchdown, which put them ahead by three because the kicker missed the kick. Damn it. Because Moody missed the kick. He made me very moody. And I'm moody still about it. But I don't know. That's not the main reason they lost. But it's part of it a little bit. Um, so those are kind of the awards and demerits of the game, I'd have to say. It's just the endless, the endless opportunities lost for the 49ers that can drive you nuts. And it's what makes me hate football in a lot of ways because uh, it makes me hate football. It, it does. You know, and the repetitious, like you get to, you see the same people in commercial after commercial after commercial after commercial after commercial. It's like we've seen enough of them. Can we move on? You know, that's not hatred. It's fatigue. It's fatigue. You know, did you not get tired of seeing Michael Bloomberg commercials? during the election last time around. Was it not too much? Was it not a commercial every 10 seconds? We get it, Michael Bloomberg. You're the, you're the greatest uh, candidate in political history. Not. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like stuff like that, though. If you see the same thing, not you know, 100 million times, you get sick and tired of it. I'm sorry. That That's normal. That's human. 
that's that's human right there. That's human reaction, honest to God. Um, and it's just the way the Vikings games, when they lose big playoff games, it's usually like this. If not getting routed, you know, you either get routed like in disgusting fashion where it's like, you know, five minutes into the game, it's like, turn it off, let's do something else practically. But, oh, you keep holding up hope. Just maybe, maybe. Oh, then the other team scored again. The Eagles, the whoever, the Giants, New York Giants, or whoever it was, uh, the 49er game years ago where they just romped us into the ground, 2019, and en route to their, uh, you know, first of two Super Bowl losses to the Chiefs. Much to my chagrin. I, I wanted to, you know, that, that was their first. That was the Chiefs' first Super Bowl win, which is interesting. Still was rooting against them because it was the 49ers, you know. But since then, the attitude of the Chiefs has, you know, really become something of, uh, you know, something of disgust for more fans than just one or two of us, honestly. I've made my point, though. Um, obviously, Bosa had some wonderful moments. He might have been a candidate for the uh, MVP of the Super Bowl. Multiple quarterback hits. Uh, he was pretty pretty damn good. He was forcing Mahomes into throwing the ball away many, many, many times. It's a damn shame. I mean, it was two phenomenal defenses. Uh, and I think Birdie up, uh, Purdy held his own pretty well. And he did protect the football. So he does deserve credit. Um, I don't. I don't know if the uh, 49ers are going to do something drastic and try to bring in a, you know, expensive quarterback, be it Kirk Cousins of all people, who's won one playoff game in his life. As much as we love him here in Minnesota, he has won one playoff game in his life. Don't forget that. One. Brock Purdy has more playoff wins already, despite the fact he might not have played that great against the uh, Packers and uh, um, whatever they're called. He has three playoff wins because he won a playoff game last year. And this is his second year in the league. Realize that? It's pretty wild. <laughs> three playoff games. And almost won a Super Bowl, too, to go along with that. So, I don't know. Obviously, Kirk Cousins doesn't have a combination of talent that the 49ers do. But that's what's also so annoying, that they couldn't find a way to, you know, not carve up Spagnuolo's defense, but get something going. Something. And, you know, three and outs when you're on, like, the Chiefs' 40-yard line. You know, holding penalties. Uh, 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 what do they call that? Um, false start after false start after false start. It was just ridiculous. It was mind-numbing. The Chiefs had their share of penalties. And then and a boo-boo, they deserved them. So, at the end of the day, obviously the 49ers deserved them. You jump early, you blew it. What are you doing, man? Ayuk of all people. Why? Why are you getting fooled by that idiot Sneed? Why? Sneed the, the schmuck. Why, why are you getting fooled by him? I, I just don't understand. So, <laughs> it was so stupid and insanely frustrating. Uh, but that's kind of how it goes. Um, but that's what's so frustrating about football. It feels insanely predictable. It, it really does. Predictable, like, you know, the stupid fumble by uh, uh, Madison. Just absolutely disgusting against Denver. That was a season-changing fumble. Everything changed after that stupid fumble, and you just knew it. You knew the Vikings weren't going to win the game when he did that. Uh, it just felt so predictable and irritating beyond belief. <sighs> yeah, and it's just, you know, you, you're getting that same vibe, you know, seeing, like, Whoever, whoever it is against the Chiefs, if it's the Buffalo Bills, if it's the, the Dolphins who didn't even show up, like, thank you very much. That's what got things really rolling. And then the um, uh, Baltimore Ravens, who just, you know, laid an egg, uh, made some stupid penalties, the most pathetic fumble you've ever seen. Should have been a touchdown, and you end up with nothing. <laughs> you end up kicking the ball off to the Chiefs. Like, that's great. <laughs> yeah, you should have been kicking the ball off to the Chiefs with seven points added to it. So, I don't know. Should have, should, woulda, coulda, shoulda. That's pretty much, once again, probably it might end up being the title of the episode. I don't know what's going to be the title, but it just reeks of, that's 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 what football is, is a bunch of woulda, coulda, shouldas. It's incredibly frustrating, and I don't know, you're putting, yeah, I don't even want to look at it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just seeing the same tiring images that all of you are probably tired of seeing as well. Um, most of you, anyway. But, um, that should pretty much about be it. I, I don't know. I mean, the fan interaction is going to be minimal. This, uh, And I'm going to step away for a little bit. Obviously, State of the Vikings 2024, I guess I'll do it. But believe me, I am strongly considering stepping away for either for either a while or for good because of stuff like this. It's It just feels like you're going to see the same old crap year in and year out. Uh, it's, I don't know, It's it sucks. So... Let's get to fan interaction. This is going to be a one-segment sh uh, shot. We're just going to be a one-segment shot. 
and then step away for a few weeks and then come back with uh, State of the Vikings, your MVP, biggest disappointment, biggest surprise. I'll put polls on Twitter, and, uh, X, whatever the heck it's called, and get that going. Pretty good idea where where we're heading in those, but um, maybe no guarantee. We'll, so we'll, we'll see what the fans uh, vote, at least the ones that listen to Purple Mafia and want to interact with Purple Mafia on X. The uh, Twitter account is at Purple Mafia Show, at Purple Mafia Show. I didn't even put a thread up on the... Uh, I didn't even put a thread up on um, what do they call it? Uh, Instagram, like I have, like I had been. I'm gonna check it just in case. I'll, I'll go there first. That's also a Purple Mafia show on Instagram. So that's the only of my accounts, my podcast that actually have have a straight name without like underscore and stuff like that. Sorry if I seem a little bit like a mess, but do you blame me? Of course I'm a mess. What is this, Russell Westbrook? What does he have to do with the Hill of Beans? Russell Westbrook. Uh, were there any responses? No. So I probably could have posted, but I, odds are nobody would have said anything anyway. I don't know, but maybe you would have. Maybe uh, Mark Carlson might have. And I don't think there's any... Oh, there is a call-in. I do believe there is. I do believe there is a call-in. Yes, yeah, so I'll probably get to that uh, right about now. On second thought, that call is actually for the State of the Vikings coming up. So if I play it here, I think that'd be a bummer. Like, let the cat out of the bag. I'd rather uh, keep that one for the next episode, State of the Vikings. So, Gerald, if that's okay, coming in out of South Dakota. He was originally from South Dakota, lived in Nebraska for a long time, and moved back to South Dakota, apparently. So I'm going to save that, if that's okay, Gerald. And I better bleep and remember. <laughs> so I was like, when I, when I was, as I was listening to it, it's like, oh, oh, oh yeah, yep. So, yes, we're going <clears> to... <throat> give that a uh we're gonna give that a uh like like a like we're gonna we're just gonna give that a rain check until next episode so if it's state of the vikings yeah because this is just a super bowl episode not sure how the numbers are going to be on this one but it is what it is i'm not sure how people are going to respond to this episode and how i've acted but i don't know it's i don't know I, I i i i made my point i think i'm tiring everybody out with all my ranting and such so at purple mafia show Let's see, pretty much. Uh, Gerald Spring was saying nice about something. Yep. Oh, yeah, like uh, Tom Brady's record versus every NFL team. I can go over it super quick, I guess. Jets, 31-8. and eight. Bill, Buffalo Bills, 33-3. and three. Holy cow. Miami, a tough time. I remember that. 24-12. and 12. Indianapolis Colts, 16-4. and four. Denver Broncos, 9-9. Nine and nine. Yep, including that AFC title game. <clears throat> which I think, again, the whole GOAT conversation with uh, Mahomes, I think is complete nonsense. When you consider Brady could have had 8, 9, or 10 Super Bowls. Do you realize that? With just the smallest little this and that. So uh, let, let's pump our brakes in the Mahomes GOAT talk. People need to slow down. I, I really think so. Nobody was calling Brady a GOAT when he won his third Super Bowl, and like he was like still super young when he won it. So everybody slow down, please. I'd, I'd appreciate that. Pittsburgh 12 and 4, including some big playoff wins. Kansas City 8 and 6. Hmm. Obviously, uh, you know, <clears throat> but everybody won the Super Bowl and the AFC title game against them. So, uh, yeah, Baltimore 8 and 5. Yep, it struggled against them a bit. 10 and 2 versus the Chargers. 11 and 1 versus the Falcons. 8 and 4 versus the Panthers. 7 and 5 versus the Saints. 9 and 2 versus the Houston Texans. 6 and 4 versus the Los Angeles Rams. <clears throat> versus the Titans. 7 and 3. Bengals 7 and 2. Cleveland Browns seven and two, Eagles seven and two, Giants six and three, uh, Jaguars eight and one. Wow, Cowboys seven and one, Packers five and three, six and one versus the Bears, five and two versus the Lions, six and one versus the Raiders, five and two versus Washington. That's not many games. Six and zero oh versus the Vikings. Yeah, yep, <clears throat> yep. No, we we never beat them. Three and two versus the Seahawks, but again, Super Bowl right there. So. Two and two versus his hometown San Francisco 49ers. Yep. Four and oh versus the Buccaneers, which he won a Super Bowl with. That's just funny. Only two and one versus the Cardinals. That's weird. And one and oh versus the uh, Patriots. He actually beat the Patriots. He's the only team that, only quarterback that's beaten every team in the NFL. So kind of funny. Um, yep. And then uh, Gerald Spring says nice. And I'm like, it figures, right? That, yeah, it's undefeated versus the Vikings. Uh, what's his name was as well, though, to be fair. Peyton Manning was also undefeated versus the Vikings. It's very, it, it would have been very interesting to find out if the Vikings could have snapped that if, uh, indeed we were against the Colts in the Super Bowl. 
uh, in 2009. I guess we'll never know. Obviously, we'll not. <clears throat> Far versus Manning, that would have been great. Malcolm McSween out of Southern California. I was like, I basically said, seriously, F that. The wrong team won. Malcolm McSween says, feels like the Niners should have won by two scores. That pump fumble was a real game changer. Oh, it really was. That changed everything. I was saying, absolutely, they they had it and just flat let it go. It's making me absolutely sick of football. It's a stress level and frustration that drives me through insanity. Uh, people wonder why I don't do many shows in the off season. I want to get away. There's a response, and I'm not seeing it. What happened to it? There is a response. It's showing it. That's very weird. I don't know why Accent Twitter does nonsense like this, and it's been doing it forever, where clearly it shows there's a response. And um, I'm just getting white screens of death here. I guess that, that might be the response. Uh, is Dave Hickey coming in out of Iowa? Sorry for you, Joey. Worst case scenario, Casey wins again. And yes, they had a down year. That's what's really annoying. Like, this, this you know... This would have been the year you get a break from seeing the stupid Chiefs win. Like, if they're going to win, you know, X amount of Super Bowls, at least this year they won't. And then they still do. Ugh, disgusting. Like, this should have been the year with all the distractions and stuff. They lose, and they still win. God. <clears throat> and sure enough, it happens. That's what uh, Dave Vicky says. I'm sick of Casey winning all the time, too. It, it could continue because Mahomes is the Michael Jordan of football, I believe. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I want to, again, I want to keep pumping my brakes on this Jordan goat stuff. I, I don't know. I, I just don't know. I just don't know. P people already forget that he got hammered pretty good by the Bucks, And I know, uh, what's his name? You know, they, they, they were, they were struggling at the offensive line at the time, but nobody felt sorry for the Vikings when we struggled at the offensive line. Nobody felt sorry for Purdy when uh defensive, uh, or, or when offensive lineman went down. So, I don't know. I, I just don't know. I don't think I buy it at the end of the day, the Jordan part. So that's kind of where I stand on that. Regardless, Dave Hickey, Malcolm McSween, you're both getting gold stars. Just thank you for joining the show. Thank you, guys. I, I, I do appreciate it. Um, I, I really do. Thank you for the interaction, Dave and Malcolm. I really appreciate you guys. I'm sorry I wasn't more interactive, but I was kind of I was kind of losing my mind watching that game. You know, through, you know, opportunity after opportunity, or, or just, you know, <clears throat> good. You stopped Mahomes again, and you did nothing. Oh, great! You stopped Mahomes again, and you did nothing. It was stuff like that. I'd rather, you know, I don't want to post a bunch of vulgar, stupid stuff and then get my uh, Twitter account shadow banned even more than it already is to a point of like I don't get new followers. I just don't. So if any of you even can find the show, please tell me on on Twitter or whatever, at Pro Mafia Show, at Pro Mafia Show, and please do give it a follow. Maybe I just make too much of an ass of myself and the show is just not going to grow. I, I don't know, but that just feels like where things are heading, unfortunately. Um, anybody out there that I've never met and you've been listening to the show for a long time, please, please join. I'd be, I mean, please, please join the conversation. Say hello. Please say hello. And anybody out there, yeah, you know, please follow the Twitter, the Instagram. It'd be nice to hear from you, interact. And you can call in like Gerald did. And again, this that, show, that episode will be saved, or that call will be saved for the next episode because it's State of the Vikings. So that would only be fair. I think I did that last year where I put it in the Super Bowl show, and it's like, no, not that one. It's not a good idea. So it's kind of letting the cat out of the bag. I'd rather leave that until the next episode, which is probably not that far away. I'd rather get started on it, get cranking on it, and not get behind and, you know, oh my God, I got to do that because we got free agency coming up. Uh, that's no fun. So, no, I'm not retiring, but I kind of want to. Put it that way. <laughs> I kind of do. Like, do you, do you blame me? Do you blame me? So, with that said, uh, thank you so much for listening. Go 49ers. Uh, dang it. Go Vikings, of course, now, once again. More than anything, hopefully... Maybe somehow, some way, someday, this franchise can land a legendary quarterback that we could call the GOAT and win at least one Super Bowl, if not more than one. Until that day, well, I, I don't know. And until that day, football is just not as fun. It's just not. Like, yay, we had a great season and lost in the first round. Yay, great season, lost in the second round. Wow, amazing season. Lost in the NFC title game. Uh, just, why can't we? Why can't we be the team that wins the whole thing? You know, even if it's just once, like Seattle. Just once, like the Saints. Just once. 
please, please, let's just put the whole thing to rest. I do not want to be the lovable loser. When people thought, oh, when the Cubs won, that took that, that took that identity away from the Cubs. So bleeping what? I don't want to be a lovable loser. I don't want that. And besides, the Cubs haven't won jack crap since. They probably will take another 100 years to win it. So at least get one, just one. Just like the whole before I die, you know, that Pilsner or whatever it is, like beer that the uh, that Surly makes locally. So <clears throat> with that said, thank you again for listening. Sorry if I'm crazy and forgive me. Please listen to the show. Please uh, tell your friends about the show. Please give a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts if possible. If you don't hate me after this, uh, Spotify, any of those, if you can give a five-star rating, it would really help this show to get some algorithms going in the right direction. It's just feeling lonely and stupid lately. Yeah, maybe it's my own fault, but if, if it is my own fault, tell me. Tell me. <laughs> you might as well. Uh, transparency is, is, is better than uh, not being transparent, I suppose. With that said, take care, and we'll be back for State of the Vikings 2024 next. Thank you.